Good morning, everybody. Lee Lowell here, smartoptionseller.com. Today is Saturday, February 19th, 2022. Yes, we're here for another edition of our Saturday Synopsis. We look at the charts. That's what we do. We look at the indexes. We look at individual stocks. We look at moving averages, technical support and resistance indicators to try to help you gauge what's happening in the market. I'm here to give you some of the 30 years of experience that I have trading in the market, stocks, options, commodities, futures, all that good stuff. I've been doing it a long time and I've used technical analysis slash chart reading to help me gauge when it's time to get in and out of trades. And I'm here to give you a little free information to try to help you up your game as well and teach you a little bit about technical analysis. So let's jump right in as we typically do every Saturday. What we do is we look at the charts. We always look at the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. We look at stocks only here. I'm not a commodities trader anymore. That's not what I do anymore. Stocks give you so many more opportunities. There's you know, thousands and thousands of stocks that you can trade options on and just trade the stocks themselves versus the futures slash commodities market, which I believe there's only maybe a dozen commodity markets that are even worth trading today. So you, you stick with the market that, that gives you more opportunities, and that's just the stock market. So in uh, the Smart Options Seller, which is our company, we run newsletters, and we sell options. We sell put options and put option spreads. Why? Because those are bullish trades, bullish to neutral directional trades. And when the market spends most of its time in an upwards trajectory, it just makes more sense playing with positions that are bullishly oriented. Now, yes, there are times when the market's in a downtrend and we have bear markets and pullbacks. And we and we and we look for that and we notice that and we use that price action to tell us, hey, it's time to, you know, pull back on positions or lighten up positions or just stay out of the market. And that's where we are right now. So let's take a look at what's happening. Like I said, we always start with the SPY. Uh, for the S&P 500, it gives us the broadest measure of the market as a whole. So what's been happening? Well, if you've been following the markets and you, and you trade in the markets, you know that we're sort of in a pullback now. Since January 1st, 2022, and we can see right here in the chart. Now, what you're seeing here is a daily chart. I always do my daily charts. I have the open, high, low, close bars. So each vertical line is one day's worth of trading. I have three moving averages, a 50-day, a 20-day, and a 200-day moving average. And down here is the RSI indicator. Those are the only things that I use. Very simple. Keep it simple, uh, stupid. The KISS method, as it's called. Keep it simple, stupid. So I only have the RSI down here. I have three moving averages. And then I draw trend lines, uh, channels, and, and patterns, these triangle patterns, and these channels, just to let you know where price action is. Follow the price action. That's, that's, always, that's the smartest thing to do is follow the price action. What does that mean? You just take a look and see which way a market or stock is trending. If it's going upwards, then you know it's in an uptrend and you can typically use pullbacks to enter the next bullish trade. If it's in a downtrending market, if the price action is moving downwards, then you know that 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 stock or index is, is in a downtrend and you can use um, pops to resell your next leg. So you want to follow the price action and drawing channels helps you follow the tr price action. Looking at these triangle patterns, which are called congestion patterns, tells you that a stock is coiling, getting ready for a big move in either direction. You just have to wait until you see which way it goes. So what are we seeing here? Well, obviously the S&P 500 since the pandemic st struck in February, March 2020 hit the bottom and we've been going up ever since pullbacks along the way, just had a nice slow move higher over the last two years or so. But as some of you uh, are very short term traders, uh, our our time frame is typically one to three months out in time. We're not day traders. We're not swing traders. We're one to three months. But for those of you that are, are shorter term traders, you have to have you have to be a little bit more precise with your your entries. So what are we seeing here? We're seeing that the the general market, the S&P 500, right around January, beginning of January in 2022, has been in this pullback, had a nice, pretty large, quick pullback the first couple of weeks of January, had the pop, and now we're starting on this new leg of a downtrend, it seems. Okay, so we had the channel here. We had this channel. Price action broke down and below the channel. So we made a low here, and then we've had this 
you know, action up and down, up and down. Volatility has increased greatly over the last couple of weeks. And we'll pull up a chart of the VIX, which shows us volatility. So you can see we're sort of in this congestion pattern here. And yesterday, which was Friday, February 18th, solidly moved below and closed below the congestion pattern here. What does that mean? Well, we could be starting more of another leg downwards. Okay, you can see right here, the price action has fallen below this congestion pattern. Does that mean we're gonna get to sustain move down and how much farther down can it go? Yet to be seen, okay? You have to, you have to let the pattern play out. Now, typically I like to see a couple days of a pattern play out before I'm convinced that that's the direction it's going in. But there's a lot of news out there that's, that's causing a lot of fear and anxiety in the markets. We have the Russia, Ukraine, situation happening that's leading to a lot of uncertainty you know is russia going to invade or not we just don't know let's put a lot of people on edge there's inflation serious inflation happening and i'm talking mostly i'm giving us united states information here inflation uh the federal reserve in the us is about to raise interest rates which is typically good for bond markets and bad for stock markets if interest rates rise you can get you know, a better return, maybe a better return on your fixed income security. So people pull money out of the stock market. Interest rates are not high enough yet to really have everyone pull their money out of the stock market because interest rates are just, even though they're going to raise interest rates, interest rates are still so small. You can't get any kind of return from bank accounts or even two year, 10 year, two year or 10 year securities. It's still very small compared to the returns you can get in the stock market. So the stock market really still is and will always be the place to get a long, the best long-term return on your money, right? So no one's going to pull all of their money out of the stock market and start investing in bonds because it's still not, um, it still doesn't give you that good return, especially with inflation. So the real return is probably still the negative numbers. So stick with the stock market. But yes, in the short term, these news driven headlines is what scares people, forces them to sell out of their position. So we're sort of in that period right now where you can see we may be in for another down leg, another leg lower. How much lower can it go? It, it, that Nobody knows where the bottom's going to be. All you can do is look at the past history of where the market has been to, to try to give you some other areas of support to look for. And, you know, I, I, I've been bullish and, I, and, and each week in these recordings, I tell you I've been bullish because I know in the long run where the market goes. Yes, we have to contend with pullbacks all the time, but in the long run, we'll even pull back to the monthly. The, in the long run, the market will go up regardless of what the news items are out there. The stock market moves on the long-term fundamentals of the companies within the stock market. So if a company is making good products and their profits are increasing, of course, the stock price has to go up in the long run. But in the short run, we have to contend with the news items that are out there. So we get these pullbacks. Eventually, the market finds a bottom because the news stories are are all played out and they're all factored into the, the stock prices. So eventually stock prices will go back up. When that happens, it could be anybody's guess. We don't know where the bottom is going to be. We don't know when, you know, the large players, which tend to move the markets, will start buying again. Eventually there will be great opportunity, you know, a place where the stock just is just so cheap you, you have to buy it. Are we there yet? We don't know. But all we can do is look for clues from the market action okay so right now the rsi is not really oversold it's not overbought it's kind of still in the middle here so there there can be opportunity for the the market itself to keep selling off what am i doing personally i i say i buy i nibble on the way down here and there when i think we we're hitting a support area now this is the 200 day moving average and you know, that's typically a line in the sand. It's a very, very healthy support area for most stocks. And when it does fall below the 200 day moving line for a period of time, it won't stay there forever and it bounces back. So you can see we had about a week's worth of trading below the, the 200 day moving average right here, this week's worth of trading and it bounced back, but now it's coming off again. 
and it's falling outside of this triangle. So we may have another pullback. Where's the next, where's the next spot to look for? Right here, the low on this bar. This day right here, low is right around 420, maybe 421 on the S SPY. So that's the, next, that's the next area that the market can shoot for, or at least look for the next possible support slash bounce, okay? I'm more leaning towards, uh, we may have some more downside to go here, okay? The market fell through the congestion. It fell through the, the 200 day moving average. I was nibbling right around the 200 day moving average to see if it was gonna bounce. And, and it didn't bounce. So now I'm waiting for the next support to show itself before I start nibbling anymore. And nibbling is, you know, a couple shares here and there. You don't have to go full force. You know, it's always better to wait for the market to tell you it's time that it's time to get in, meaning the market has shown us that it's ready to move back up. Right now, has fallen below the 200-day moving average, fallen out of this congestion pattern. I'm not nibbling anymore right now. I did all my nibbling here and now I wait and I'm on a long-term hold. I'm talking years. You know, this is just me, not investment advice here. This is just my opinions. This is what I do. I'm not telling you what to do, but that's what I've done. I've nibbled on the way down a little bit and now I'm going to wait until I see the next support show up. Where that may be, when that may be, I don't even know yet. All I can do is make higher probability trades and Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. But for me, S&P 500 is where I keep a lot of my retirement money, my long-term funds. So that's what I do. And now I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait because the market is showing me they may, it may have some more downside to go. Okay, so that's the S&P 500. Keep an eye on it. We may see some more selling here. It's falling down through the congestion pattern. So there may be some more selling next week. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ using the QQQ, triple Qs we call it. Same thing, been coming down since the beginning of January. Or so, and also the triangle congestion pattern fell through it yesterday, Friday, February 18th. You can see this bar right here. So, we know that the market still wants to sell. A lot of stocks, individual stocks, have come off quite a bit. We'll look at a few. I've got I get emails from people saying, you know, they 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 bought calls or they bought stock on these these growth stocks, these Momo stocks, those momentum stocks, and all a lot of these stocks have been getting hit real hard. And, you know, people are just frustrated and they're angry and they, they're losing money and they just don't know what to do. And, and I feel for you and I feel for them because trying to get on momentum stocks and, and trying to figure out, well, you know, when's the time to get out or should I keep holding? And it keeps dropping on you. It gets more frustrating. It's hard, you know, trying to make money um, trying to make trading as a living is a hard gig. It's a hard gig, especially if you're trading very short term call options or even put options, you know, one or two days before expiration, those things decay really quickly. And if the market moves against you, it, it, those things will evaporate and you'll have, there'll be no value left in those things. So just be careful if you're playing that game. But anyway, same thing with the QQQ looks a little weak here, came down through here. The next, the next bottom would be this spot right here. So that's the, that's the number that the market probably will be shooting for. You know, when, you know, if I had to make a guess, when would, you know, a bottom show up or what, what is that? What does that look like when we know the bottom is here? The, the only thing that I've seen over my years, and it actually happened, you know, let's go back to the uh, March of 2020 here. Uh, th that doesn't even show up. But when you get that one long, that one day, that one day of just immense selling that you just see this one huge long vertical down move bar where this goes into a oversold, the R side goes into an oversold, and it just looks like everyone's just giving up and they're puking out everything. And it'll, that'll show up in a long one day, big, big bar and where everyone's just giving up and the volume just, you know, flies through the roof more volume than you've ever seen before that's typically what we call the capitulation day the capitulation stage where everyone just throws their hands up says i'm done i'm out of the stock market forever and that's typically when the bottom hat that's typically when you see that bottom that one day bottom but when you get this sort of you know this is a measured sort of um easy moving downtrend that just keeps chipping away every single day 
that you know it's not it's not huge it's it's not rushed it's not just that one day thing it's just this continual drip lower 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 which is very measured which is that's the worst we don't i don't like that kind of sell off which is every day it's just more and more and more we need that one day crash where we know that's when the bottom occurs but for now we haven't seen that it's just this sort of slow dripping lower which that's what's a really frustrating type of market um but for now this thing could keep going um you know in our the in our newsletter in our smart option seller newsletter which is when we sell naked put options on on quality stocks that we like typically fifty dollar and under stocks the first time this is the first time that's happened for us since i started the service in 2017 we completely have no positions on at all right now and selling put options is more of a neutral to a bullish directional position and we have no positions because the market is not telling me it's time to get in the market was telling me it's time to stay out or unwind the positions we have so we just closed yesterday or on thursday um we closed out of our last position because it was time to get out and right now we have no positions because the market's telling me it's not time to get in in our vertical spread trader newsletter where we sell put option credit spreads we have two positions on and they're in the indexes and so we give ourselves a decent amount of cushion below the current price of the stock. I'm hoping that, you know, I, I, I want to be bullish. Our positions are more bullish. Of course, I want to see a bottom show up. And this, yesterday, this does not make me happy. I wanted to see a bounce through the upside of the congestion pattern, but we're not there yet. So we're we're still playing light. We're, we're actually in playing no positions because the market's not telling we don't get short we don't play bearish positions that's just not what we do you can certainly make money playing bearish positions usually you can make a lot more money a lot quickly on the down moves because they happen so fast but you have to be quick and you have to be nimble and you have to know when to take your profits for me i've learned over the long run i'd rather just stay long with bullish positions because i know in the long run the market goes up over time it's really hard to be profitable for long periods of time shorting the market because you have to know when it's time to get in and you have to know when it's time to take profits, right? So if you if you got short up here and it came down, you're making money, and if you didn't take profits here, you probably gave a lot of it back up here, depending on how many days until expiration you were playing. So we don't play the short side. We wait for the long, for the for the bullish end of the market to show up. So we're light in both of our newsletters just because the market's telling me it's not time to to get back in on bullish trades. So this is the NASDAQ. Looks a little weak, just like the the S&P 500. We can look at the Dow. The Dow Jones uh, represented by the DIA. These are the diamonds. DIA is the symbol. The Dow has been much more flat than the S&P or or the QQQ. You can see how flat it's been basically since last summer really flat here we can even draw some support and resistance levels you know you can connect some of the bottoms here here and we go along the top here so this kind of gives us a, a gauge of you know where the dow has sort of been trading in and if you if you have mostly dow stocks in your portfolio eh, you know you're not really even thinking much either way because it re- not much has really happened so you're sitting a little bit prettier than the s p 500 and the Nasdaq because those have been showing a little bit more of a down move. All right, so the Dow's a little more stable. The Nasdaq, of course, has more of those growth Momo stocks. That's why it's been getting hit a little bit harder. Let's take a look at some of these stocks because people write into me telling me about some of these stocks that they've they've been trying to trade. They've been trying to get long with call options. Stocks like Palantir, PL, PLTR, Palantir. I mean, it's just, you know, back here, it was a $45 stock, just been moving down. The, so here's this this down leg the last few months. Um, it's now getting down towards $10 a share. Let's see, um, you know, Palantir came into existence not that long ago, towards the end of 2020, gone all the way up, and it's come all the way back down to its IPO price. Palantir, um, Shopify even. You know, Shopify is a great company, um, it's, you know, online Website creator, online business store. 
has been doing real well. Let's look at the monthly. You know, Shopify has been around since 2015 or so. And it's just, it's a, it's a great story. Look how it just, I mean, almost $1,800 a share from practically zero in 2015. That's a massive move up. But look where it's come in just a couple months. It's given back more than half of its value. We can we can look on the the daily chart. So here was an all time high, you know, around seventeen hundred and fifty dollars a share, and just in the last few months has cratered all the way down to six hundred and fifty six dollars a share. That's just the massive massive move, right? And the RSI still isn't even into the oversold territory. Got oversold. It was telling you it was a little oversold here, but it kept dropping. It dropped another $400 a share. It's a big move, all right? You're playing those kind of high price stocks. You have to be aware of the, of the amount of price that it can give up. So Shopify, even though I think it's a great company, is a very expensive stock. And, you know, if you'd gotten in long ago, you know, did you take profits? Did you have a sell stop? Did you have a stop loss, right? If you bought in, let's say even at two hundred dollars, it went all the six hundred. That's a you know a fourteen hundred dollar gain. Did you take some money off the table? Did, were you peeling peeling some of your shares off the table, or if you're buying calls, were you taking profits along the way? Some you know you have to understand when you're when you're playing options contracts, they have an end date, they have an expiration date. You need to get out of these things when you have profits build up. People just think they'll just hold forever and, they'll, and the stocks will just keep going up and they'll just keep make, making money. It's not how it works. You know, stocks pull back, as you can see, and you can give up a lot of those hard earned gains. You don't want to do that. You have to take profits at some point. Um, so that's Shopify. What other, you know, there's stocks like DocU, um, you know, $300 stock now down to close to $100 stock. That's DocU, TDoc. You know, all these all these growth stocks that people loved, you know, coming out of the pandemic. Three, another $300 stock down to 65. You can just see the price action. These 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 high growth, you know, high momo, the momentum stocks that everybody seemed to pile in and now everyone's getting hurt. So that's TDoc. We had DocU, even Zoom which everybody loves. I mean, I use Zoom all the time. Um, you know, $580 a share back here last October, and now it's all the way moving its way down towards 100. So all these stocks, um, skills, you know, people tell me about these stocks. They, they've they been in $45 stock all the way down to under $4 now. So, you, you know, I, you may be in some of these, you may have bought some of these. Trading is hard, right? You get on these websites and you get on these chat rooms and everyone's pumping up these these stocks that, you know, real some, some of these companies have no business being in business, right? You know, unless they're really offering a good service or product, which some of them are, I, I'll admit that, but do they have profits? How are their earnings? How long have they been in business? Now, this company, which is Skills, has been in business since... Let me look at the date here. Uh, since May 1st, 2020. That's not a long time to be in business, right? I, I don't typically like to look at stocks that have less than five years worth of trading information on them. But, you know, whatever, you know, if that's the way you want to trade, more power to you. But anyway, so so these are some of the, you know, the emails I get about these momentum growth stocks that are all getting hit right now. It's hard. And so if you want to be in for the long haul, you have to understand over time, long term, you have to pick stocks that have been in business a while, have earnings that are growing quarter after quarter, you know, showing profits that keep going up. You know, even dividend stocks, if they raise their dividends each year, those are quality stocks. I'm in for the long haul. Long haul. I've learned long ago, it's too hard to trade intraday or, you know, daily like that. It's just too hard. You know, there's too much volatility in the market, but over the long run, if you're invested for the long haul, you can, you can make it work. But in our newsletter, we're more short term. We're one to three months out is our time frame. So we have to be pretty precise with our, with our entries and exits. So that's why knowing technical analysis is really important. Just trying to figure out where the support lies, where the resistance lies, when it's time to get in and out. So let's take a look at some individual stocks as we typically do. 
Let's take a look at Apple. We'll look, we look at the more uh, popular stocks here because that's what a lot of people like to trade and that's what like people like to hear about. Something on my screen here. Get this little thing out of here. Not sure what that is. Anyway, um, Apple, you know, been holding up pretty decent, kind of in this range here between, you know, 165 to 180 or so, holding up pretty good. Uh, obviously, it, it's pulled back the last couple of days. Not a lot. I mean, that's not a huge move kind of stuck in this channel here um, we even we can draw some more you know it's got some got some support here along here depending on where where you want to draw the line um, so it has still sort of still in this uptrend here that's good we have this support right here around you know 167 or so it's kind of falling through it here so we want to see if this support can hold uh, but we know in the long run Apple is a great company can you hold until then? Are you playing short term or are you in for the long haul? It depends what type of investor slash trader you are. Apple holding up pretty well. I know once the market, the general market gets off its butt and starts to move higher, you know Apple's going to power up and make more all-time new highs. Um, what else do we like to look at? Let's look at Amazon. Amazon still a crazy looking stock. Um, it, you know, was coming down, coming down, had the earnings pop here, had the, the air pocket here, went from here all the way up to here, rallied like $500 a share. And now the last two weeks has sort of been in this little downtrend, this activity right here. You could almost see it as a bull flag. You know, a bull flag is when you get a long one day action here. Okay. And then you have the pennant, which is this activity here. And then we'll typically, will blast to the upside. So let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm seeing. And we'll color it up. We'll make it a little bit wider. And then we'll work on the flag here. Okay, sometimes I say you have to do a little manual labor. Darken it up, widen it up. Okay, so now we'll be able to see the flag. Okay, you got the long pole, the flag pole, and the little bit of a downtrending flag part, the pennant part. Typically, a bull flag, this is a bullish pattern, and the, the price action will pop out and go above and start moving higher again. If you want to search it out, do a Google search on bull flag or bull pennant patterns, and you'll see it looks exactly like this. Now, will it will it pan out? It, if the indexes, you have to have the general market going up and then Amazon will, will go up as well and it'll pop out of the flag and start to move higher. But for now, Amazon's still caught in this very deep, long, look how long this channel's been, All right? So it's still in that range. Nothing for me up or down with Amazon. It's just still caught in that range. Let's look at Google. <sighs> Starting to come off, had the nice earnings pop here and just coming off along with the rest of the market. It's gotten down below the 200 day moving average, finished on the low yesterday. You can see right here, the dash mark on the right side of the bar that shows where it closed for the day. So Google's coming off just with all the other stocks. AMD, we like to talk about each week. I'm long personally AMD as well. I had mentioned when it had been coming down here, this, this harsh move right here, I'd been, I had bought in between 100 to 110. I bought some shares. I was waiting for it to come down to the 200 day moving average, came down to it, fell down through it. So here is my buy range right in here. Went all the way back up to 130. Thought I had myself some good buys there and it's coming back. Now it finished around 113, fell back down again this week, but sitting right around support, right on the 200 day moving average. Here we are. So we like that we'd like to see the the general market. We we want to see things start to move up again because I want to be bullish for the long run. I don't like these pullbacks more than just like anybody else. I don't like these full pullbacks. But you have to endure these things. That's just what the market does. You have to pick quality stocks. And if you're in something that is you know kind of dubious, you probably you know you want to set your stop losses. You you don't want to give it all away, right? You know, unless you're really in for the long haul, five years, 10 years, all right, you ride it out. Now, stocks like um, PayPal and Square, which I'm big on that industry. I'm big on the, the online payments industry, but this is just ridiculous. Look at, this is PayPal. PayPal's just been getting crushed, okay? Now, I bought in, into some PayPal. I will admit, got into some here, 
okay, around here, trying to, even me, I tried to do a little, little nibbling, a little bottom picking, not a lot, you know, just to, just to, because I, it was getting very oversold, bought some, and just this past week, two weeks, just been getting hit really hard. Now, it is getting down to some oversold area on the RSI, so that's the warning sign. Hey, you know, it's starting to get really oversold here. Um, I'm hoping that we, we see a bounce pretty quickly. Um, Square, same thing, same payment sector. Just look at this, just a rough downtrending channel. Now, it, it, it hasn't even hit, it hit some oversold here, uh, had a little bounce, but now continues on the down move. So Square looks like it's definitely got some more down action to go. PayPal looks a little bit more oversold than Square does. Square looks like it wants to keep going. PayPal, on the other hand, looks like we've it, it has that really deep, quick, sharp move to the downside. Could see a bounce more in PayPal than Square at this point. But you know this is what's happening in the market. You know when everybody sells, whether the stock, whether it's whether it's um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Justified or not, everything gets sold because that's just how it works. Even stocks that shouldn't be sold. Tesla, let's take a look at Tesla. Tesla's still kind of holding up here. Let me pull back a little bit. In this longer term downtrend, here was a support line. I don't even know if this is support anymore. I'm going to take this off. It's still just kind of in this you can see the channel that I've, that I've drawn. Here's the 200-day moving average. So it is finding some support near the 200-day moving average. Will it fall down below and hit the bottom leg here, or will it bounce off the 200-day and start to move up again? It seems to want to just be stuck around the, you know, the $850, $900 range. So, so Tesla, for now, is in this longer-term downtrend, but could have it pops during the day or pops for a couple days. Tesla's a hard one. I've always said this test is hard for me to read on a technical analysis basis. Um, what else do we have? Disney. We like to look at Disney. We've talked about Disney. Disney had the bottom here. Got well, got really oversold here, popped a little, and then had this big cascade move down. Um, I bought some down here at the bottom, and it's holding up pretty decent, Disney. So, you know, Disney, great company. You know, in the long run, it's going to go back up. It's just whether you have the 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 nerves to hold out you know if you if you need the money to pay your rent to pay your bills whatever you, you really shouldn't be speculating like this a short-term speculation trades short-term call option buying whatever because it, it may not work out for you in the long run i know disney's going higher so i nibble you know i nibble on the lows here and hold for the long run um let's see what other stocks we have oracle pulling back i love oracle but not now i'm not in yet because it's pulling back. It's not showing me it's time to move up yet. Cisco had decent earnings the other day. Uh, Cisco's holding up pretty good. Um, let's take a look at a few other stocks. The healthcare, a uh, Walmart. Okay, well, I always talk about Walmart. Once again, I bought a little more when it got down to the 135 range. That's what I've been talking about. Here's that support line right around 135. Walmart had earnings this past week did real well too this is where the pop came right here on thursday had the pop up to close to 140. so i'm hoping i'm hoping walmart's going to hold up around the 135 level you know that's where i'm in at um come on don't do this to me today uh, let's move this back over here okay so what other stocks um the healthcare stocks Oh, Netflix, of course, still kind of hanging around the lows there. Facebook, still kind of hanging around, making new newer lows this week. Um, where's my healthcare stocks? Eli Lilly seems to be holding up, hanging right on the 200-day moving average. Bristol Myers, Bristol Myers has been a nice one since it made that low here. Been doing good. Pfizer um, heading down towards the 200-day moving average. Merck kind of hang just kind of hanging around so uh healthcare a little bit of a mixed bag but we know in the long run everyone needs health care so these healthcare bar pharmaceutical stock companies should do well verizon i talk about uh had the bull flag here did go up came back down again it's kind of moving sideways eventually i'm going to get into verizon at some point need to see it get above the this downtrending 200 day moving average kellogg doing okay hanging around 
Uh, Lululemon has that nice day move as well. Um, Peloton. You know, I'm just pointing out a lot of these stocks that just got hammered. We all know the story of Peloton not doing so well right now, still moving down. There was some word that a couple companies may had some interest in possibly buying them. So we had that little pop here, but starting on the downtrend, starting to move down again. So be careful out there, people. Be careful. Uh, Pepsi doing okay still. Coca. I want to bring up Coca-Cola because that Coca-Cola is just the stalwart of all stalwarts, right? Just all-time new highs again. Let me just make sure that is an all-time new high. Yep. All-time new highs for Coca-Cola the other day. Actually, yesterday, Friday, February 18th, right here. All-time new highs. You can't go wrong with Coca-Cola either, right? Got high dividend paying stock, a stalwart. Doesn't make a lot of price improvement, a price appreciation, I should say, but it's just nice and stable, right? It just gives you that good feeling that you know the company's doing well. The stock's going to keep going up over time, get that good dividend. Coca-Cola, don't don't poo-poo it. It's a, it's a great company, great stock to hold long-term. IBM had a nice little down move the last two weeks as well. I'm just going through my stocks here. And uh, Bitcoin stocks, uh, not AMC, Riot and marathon still kind of hanging around you know bitcoin's trying to find its footing here what else we have alibaba also a long-term and long-term downtrend all right uh clorox i had mentioned i had gotten i had gotten into clorox uh up here and i got out around here because um in the aftermarket you know, they're seeing no trading here. That's during the day session. But in the aftermarket and the pre-market, it trades. So there was some trading activity here that I got out, got down to lows, but but seems to be popping up a little. Um, but anyway, that's the story of my journey with Clorox. All right, that's it. Um, once again, let's take a look at the SPY. Try to get a game plan for next week. Um, keep an eye on the the down move here, like I said, we could have some more downside action. Look for this area to be the next area where it may hold temporarily. Don't know. Could bounce from there or it could just bounce. Maybe we'll get some good news this week. Russia, Ukraine has settled their differences. That'll really make the market go. Just remember, you know, a lot of these news stories have nothing to do with the actual companies in the stock indexes, right? What's happening in Ukraine and Russia really shouldn't affect these U.S. companies, unless they have some kind of, um, you know, they have business in those com countries. They have exposure, whether they have exposure or not. Most of these U.S. companies probably don't have a lot of exposure in, in Russia or Ukraine. So the the long-term determinant of, the, of those stock prices really shouldn't have anything to do with what's happening in Russia and Ukraine. But that's just the general consensus of the market. People get scared. Oh, let's look at the VIX real quick. Wanted to bring that up. Um, the VIX, like I said, always has these these short term spikes, quick couple days spikes. We had this one here recently, came back down, and now we're sort of undergoing another little spike. And when the market drops, the VIX spikes. That's what happens. People get scared. So these these spikes don't last very long. I'm hoping we'll see the end of it, and the VIX will come off which means the stock market will go back up. So we'll, we'll see what happens this week. All right, getting a little long here in the synopsis. Let's move on. Um, hope that's been helpful for you. I'm um, keeping an eye. We're light. You know, we're, we're light on our positions just because the market's telling me it's not time to get in and these bullish trades. All right, let's go to our website, smartoptionseller.com. Please go to our website, download our free or put your name in for our free put selling basics guide it tells you all about how to sell put options why we sell put options why we love selling put options that's what we do get a free copy also if you want to know a little bit more about the services that we offer right here hover your mouse here we have two newsletters and our coaching sessions all right i want to try to keep this under 40 minutes talking real fast uh that's it for me today hope this video has been helpful give me a thumbs up leave me a comment send me an email and I love hearing from you. All right. I think that's about all for, for me today. Um, have a good weekend, everyone, and a, and a good trading week ahead. I don't think I'll be around next Saturday. Uh, next, next Saturday, I'm, and next week, I'm, I'm involved in a, in a seminar, uh, options trading seminar I'll be teaching. So no video for next week. I'll catch you in two weeks. All right. Be good, everyone. This is Lee Lowell signing off.